Does anyone here in this room know the game Six Degrees of Separation? I'm pretty sure that if I tried hard enough I could find, from within my friends, relatives, people I've once met at the gym, a chain of people that would lead me to some very interesting, influential people. But does it mean I know them? So I asked around. And someone who works with me now has an associate as a former employee to Kevin Rudd. Therefore, Prime Minister, <laughs> I, I bet you didn't know this. <laughs> But there is a fink link directly to your office in Parliament House. <laughs> it's the same distance, a connection of the alleged link to the story in the Daily Telegraph. Of course. Do I know Kevin Rudd? No. Have I met Kevin Rudd? No. Do I have any influence over Kevin Rudd? No. <laughs> Would it be a complete beat up for any of you to publish a headline tomorrow? Link to PM. <laughs> yes, it would. What I would like tomorrow's headline to focus on is the very real threat to civil liberties for the anti association laws being introduced by most state governments. I'm not going to get into a lot of detail about the laws, as you will soon hear from one of Australia's leading criminologists on what that will mean for every Australian citizen. But I do want to challenge the media to apply more scrutiny to these laws. A few years ago, when the former federal government proposed some very serious laws to deal with terrorism, there was a national outcry about the impact they would have on civil and legal rights. Speakers in this very room denounced the unjust aspects of those laws, and journalists across the country wrote large volumes about their impacts on basic legal rights. Due to that public scrutiny, many of the harshest and most unjust elements of those laws were removed or watered down. As we have seen in the last 24 hours, that doesn't seem to have affected the ability to combat terrorism. It's ironic that much of the criticism of the anti-terror laws came from state governments, most of whom are now passing equally bad laws at the state level. What's worse is that because governments claim the laws are targeted only at bikers, they're going almost unreported by the media. But these laws do not only affect bikers, in fact, the New South Wales legislation doesn't even contain the words bike up or motorcycle club. These laws strip away fundamental legal rights, such as freedom of association, the presumption of innocence, open court hearings and the right of appeal. And then they can be used against any group or individual. I challenge the media, both here today and around Australia, to look far more seriously at these laws, apply the same level of scrutiny you applied to the anti-terror laws because the act impact on human rights is just as bad. I might be just one person and just a dad from Western Sydney, but I'm telling you today, it's not just about me or even about people who ride motorcycles. It's an issue about human rights. It's an issue for every person listening to me here, in the press gallery and at home across Australia. Don't just believe me, find out for yourself. Read the legislation. You'll soon see what our governments are doing to us is a lot more scary than a few guys with tattoos and leather jackets. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ferret. Uh